Arguably, this is the lowest point in the history of the Canadian Armed Forces in terms of combat readiness. A recent internal report revealed that nearly half of Canada's combat vehicles and weaponry would be undeployable in the case of war due to a lack of available spare parts and trained personnel required to maintain our aircraft, ships, and armored vehicles. It is time to target what drastic steps must Canada take to revitalize our long-suffering military. Not mentioned in that damning internal report was the advanced age of much of that same combat equipment. For instance, Canada's dwindling fleet of CF-18 Hornet fighter jets are more than four decades old, and the 12 Halifax-class frigates that form the backbone of the Royal Canadian Navy have been in service since 1991. From 2001 until 2014, Canada sent over 40,000 troops to fight in Afghanistan. During those 13 years, the Canadian Army did successfully hone its warfighting skills and they acquired specialized equipment and weaponry. However, the campaign in Afghanistan was that of counterinsurgency against a primitively armed, largely illiterate Taliban. Most of the tactics learned and equipment purchased by the Canadian Army were aimed at self-protection from improvised explosive devices and suicide attacks by fanatical jihadists. For their part, the RCAF flew its most recent combat sorties against Gaddafi's Libyan loyalists in 2011 and then against ISIS, aka Daesh, insurgents in Iraq and Syria from 2014 until 2016 as part of Operation Impact. No casualties were sustained by the RCAF throughout these extended campaigns for the simple reason that the Libyans and Daesh evildoers were without sophisticated air defenses. The last guns ablazing experience for the Royal Canadian Navy was off the coast of Libya in 2011 when Gaddafi loyalists opened fire on HMCS Charlottetown near the rebel-held city of Misrata. Needless to say, they missed. Fast forward to February 2022 and the Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The heretofore unthinkable became reality as we suddenly had two near-peer modern militaries waging conventional war on European soil. Now, more than two years into that conflict, observers can see exactly what technology has emerged as the new queen of the battlefield. <coughs> Turns out, it's the same weapon that has dominated battlefields since the invention of gunpowder, the artillery. However, in a near-peer clash, the artillery needs to be self-propelled and armored for the survivability of the gunners. The M777 155mm howitzers that Canada obtained for Afghanistan were well suited against a foe that possessed no fire detection technology nor any weapons with which to engage the Canadians in return. Russian forces have very sophisticated counter-battery assets which include a wealth of their own artillery and ammunition. Hence, the M777s have proven to be a bust in Ukraine. In the air, the drone is the master of the skies in the Ukraine conflict, with both sides employing huge numbers of remotely piloted attack drones of varying sizes. There is literally nowhere to hide on the modern battlefield. As a result, we've seen a wave of counter-drone measures implemented by both sides, which includes everything from active air defense to additional protection on the top of armored vehicles. In terms of manned combat fighters or helicopters, their use has been limited thus far in the conflict. There have been no swirling dogfights overhead, and due to the presence of effective ground air defenses, the Russian Air Force has only appeared when the circumstances have allowed them to attain localized window of air superiority. At sea, the Ukrainians have steadily sunk major Russian Navy warships in the Black Sea with seaborne drones. This has led military analysts to question the value of manned capital ships in the future warfare. Given that the Canadian Armed Forces need to be rebuilt from the ground up, the architects of that restructuring should look to this ongoing conflict as the blueprint for Canada's future military. The fact is, the single biggest challenge crippling the current CAF is the shortfall of personnel in the ranks. The good news is that the future is headed towards an almost completely human-free battle of the high-tech machines. This has been On Target. I'm Scott Taylor.